Hi there and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. Previously in this series I showed you how to create ocean waves using BOSS. In the next couple of videos I'll show you how to add a boat wake to it. As always, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Diego Trazzi on whose work these tutorials are based. There are two kinds of wakes I can add to my ocean plane. One uses the BOSS mesh itself to create a ripple foundation, which is also good enough on its own for far away shots. The other layers bifrost particles on top of that, adding a dynamic foam for close-ups. In this video I'll show you how to do the former, and in the next we'll do the latter. I'm going to start with the scene we created in part 2 by hiding the final result and showing the boss output playing it again. Next I'm going to half the wind speed on my spectral waves to make them a little gentler. No need to knock my boat around too much. I'm also going to start generating my results right from frame 1. This isn't so important for this tutorial, but will be in the next one since Bifrost particles start calculating as soon as you hit play. Finally, I'm going to up my frame count to 320 since I'll need the extra frames for my bone animation. Then I'll just recache the waves out. There we go. Now I'm ready for my boat, which I'll import from a pre-made file. At first the boat is huge, because if you recall from part 1, Maya defaults to 1 unit equals 1 centimeter. Since Boss assumes 1 unit equals 1 meter, I'll need to scale the boat down 100 times. That's better. Now in order to create a wake, the boat needs to be moving, so I'll just animate it driving from one end of the plane to the other. Obviously this is a little rough. For our natural production you'd want a much nicer boat, and to animate it bobbing up and down on the waves, but for the sake of a tutorial this'll do. Now that my scene is set up, I can start on the water. The first thing I'm going to do is add a wave solver. Unlike spectral solvers, which are great for simulating large-scale ocean waves, wave solvers are tuned specifically for doing more intimate, small-scale ripple effects. For good results, I'll need to increase the resolution, but not as much as the spectral waves. Ten times the size of the ocean plane makes for a good balance of speed and fidelity. Now I'll select the boat, and add it as a geometry influence. For all intents and purposes, this is a collider. As a side note, because the boat is so simple, we're just going to use the mesh as is. For more complex models, you'll want to consider using a low-res proxy object instead, or things could get a little slow. Now if I play the animation, I should already see some results. So as you can see, the boat is already generating a wake. If I select the Geo Properties node, I can even up the amplitude to accentuate it more. Alternatively, I could leave this at 1 and adjust the wave height in the wave solver instead. Unlike the spectral waves where I told you to avoid this value, here it's okay to play with. Just note that this will affect all influences associated with that solver, so if you had multiple boats with multiple wakes, they'd get scaled up too. That looks a little intense, so I'm going to bump it back down to 1.5. So this is all looking pretty good so far, but as I tumble around, I'm noticing a problem. The wake sometimes moves away from the boat. This happens because the spectral waves are pushing the wake out from underneath it. So how do I fix it? Well, I'm going to cheat a little. Rather than combining the waves and wake together, then displacing the mesh, I'm instead going to project the wake onto the displaced waves as a bump map. This will ensure that the geometry is displaced first, before applying the wake. To generate the projection, I'm going to disable my spectral waves, but leave the wave solver in influence. That turns my ocean into a flat plane, and as you can see the wake is now correct. I'm not going to cache my solver yet though, because I still want to make a few adjustments. 
While I'm getting a really nice wake off the back of the boat, also known as a Kelvin wake, I'm not getting much of anything at the front. The problem is that the boat is moving too fast for the wake to keep up. A quick jump to wireframe mode confirms that the wake is being generated inside the boat. Of course, that's not helping anyone, so I'm going to artificially push the bow wake forward. Going back to my Geo Properties tab, this time I'm concerned with two values, Generator Offset and Collider Offset. As you might imagine, the generator is responsible for generating actual ripples. That's why they got bigger when we increased its amplitude value earlier. This time, I'll use the offset value to generate ripples ahead of the collider. Let's try a value of 20. While well, that worked, the bow wake is certainly larger than before, but this is like comically large. With 20 units of space, the generator has too much room to ripple before hitting the boat. But if I pull the generator too far back again, we'll get the same problem as before. So the solution is to push the collider forward too. I don't want to push the collider right up against the generator though, otherwise there won't be any space for the ripples. Values of 12 and 8 should be good. There, that's a much nicer, more natural looking bow wake. Next, I'm going to adjust the capillary setting. Capillary waves are primarily driven by the effects of surface tension. Functionally, they'll give us some nice secondary ripples. And finally, like the spectral waves before, I'll add in some foam. Now I'm ready to cash out the solver. As usual, once the cache is complete, you'll see it down here in the cache attributes. And I'll just double check the XR files to make sure they're what I expect. That looks right. Great! Now that I have a usable cache, I can hide the boss output like before and bring back the result plane. Now I need to apply the wake. Remember, I want to project the wake on top of the existing displacement map, so to do that I'm going to add it as a bump map, down here in the shader's geometry section. Like before, I'm going to right click and apply it as a projection. Then I'll load the appropriate files as an image sequence. Just make sure to take the main cache and not the foam, which I'll deal with in a second. Now I'll turn it negative 90 degrees down and scale it up 30 times. And finally, because I don't want the wake to repeat, I'm going to turn off its wrap attributes. Great! Now if I render a random frame, I should be able to see the wake. Hmm, I'm not seeing much at the moment. Let me try strengthening the wake by turning up the bump depth value. There it is. And as you can see, it stays centered around the boat this time. I think I'll just make it a bit more prominent. Now to finish off, I need to add in my foam, but you'll recall that I already have foam for the spectral waves as well. I'll need to add these foams together, just like the spectral displacements before. I'll start by temporarily disconnecting the current foam. Then I'll add the new foam as a projection, just like before. This time I'll make sure to take the foam map. I'll turn off wrap. 
and then rotate it down and scale it up. So now that I have my wave foam and wake foam, I can add them together using a color math node. In this case, I want to use the alpha to control the brightness of the white foam. Then feed the result into the shader's emission. And there you have it. Now I have foam white caps over the wake. If I prefer, I can adjust the prominence of the foam via the image's alpha gain. And I can always sequence render to see the animated result. So that's it for my basic wake. Like I said before, it's a good foundation that might even be enough for distant shots. But in the next tutorial, I'll show you how Bifrost particles can really improve the effect for close-ups.